Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Online and In-Person Worship. I'm Reverend Heidi Moore, pastor here at RLC. We come to you from our sanctuary here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Now, we have a special message for those of you joining us online. We invite you to participate with the Resurrection Lutheran Community of Faith as we celebrate synchronous communion. This is a time to share communion with us as you worship in your home or wherever you may be. Now, before we begin worship, you may wish to gather a few items, including candles and matches, bread or crackers, and wine or juice. So together, let us light our candles as we bring the light of Christ into our midst. Uh-oh, the hand is up. Good morning, church. And welcome to Resurrection Lutheran in person and online on this 13th Sunday of Pentecost. We are delighted that you have joined us, whether you be right here on the campus of RLC, across the street, across town, even across the country, and from around the world. Whether you're here in our sanctuary or in another location, let us know that you are here through our Facebook chat. And I encourage those here on the RLC campus to use your handheld devices and communicate with those joining us on Facebook. Be sure, and also, always be sure to like us and follow us to be notified of special events and worship opportunities. Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching out to each other, loving God through our worship and praise, and caring for all of God's children and creation. Now, the Rappahannock Area Health District, of which we are a part, reports a COVID-19 community level as medium as of September 2nd. So we here at RLC do follow the current guidelines for community transmission levels. So when the level is at medium, CD, CDC asks us to consider wearing a mask if we're going to be near people who are immunocompromised. Stay after worship for Koinia Cafe and then our first fellowship forum, which features Bob Cuckuck presenting on artificial intelligence and society. And we have got a big Sunday next week as we participate in God's work in our hands. Sign-up sheets are available for each project and links are active in the RLC update. And we'll start with worship at 10 a.m., followed by a light lunch at 11.30, and then we're off to work on one of two projects. One of them is landscaping at Chancellor Elementary School. Before the pandemic, we put in some landscaping over there, and so now we're going to be able to go over and freshen up that landscaping and provide a nice welcome for all the kiddos who go to school there. And then we're bagging breakfast. So we, I call them the breakfast baggers. And these breakfasts are for our neighbors who are served by Micah Ministries, um, <clears throat> uh, for, who are either um, home insecure or food insecure. Now, we are going to need a lot of items for those bags, and a, a lot has already come in. But the complete list is in the RLC weekly update, and of course, we need lots of you signing up to do this. So on Sunday, September 11th, come to church dressed in work clothes. I understand that that might not feel quite right for a lot of folks, so just bring a change of clothes. And this is a wonderful event, so we want you to invite your friends to come and work alongside of us as we do God's work with our hands. Our Wednesday Women's Bible Study Group meets on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m., and this group meets both online and in person on our campus here. And they continue to examine what it means to be Lutheran using the book Being Lutheran Today, A Lay Person's Guide. And we've been having a lot of fun with this. We ex um, <clears throat> and so it is available on Amazon. It is by Reverend Edwards and Reverend Luter. And it has sparked a lot of conversation. Join us in prayer by putting your prayer requests in the Facebook chat. We ask that you submit them before the end of the sermon. And uh, for those of you, again, you can put your prayer requests in the Facebook chat if you didn't um, do that when you signed in today. 
You can find out more about RLC, about de details for all activities, as well as links by reading the latest edition of the RLC weekly update that is posted on our website and on our Facebook page. The leading worship today is the Chancel Choir as well as Praise Team. And we welcome back Sue Bridges, who is our guest accompanist today. So let's give you a nice round of applause. We are so glad to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Our video production team is Dave Evers on sound. Robert Schul is behind the camera. And Jeff Slunt is working our visuals. And I'm Reverend Heidi Moore. I'm pastor here at Resurrection. So we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and I invite you all to rise and sing together our call to worship, Shall We Gather at the River? The words are in the bulletin and on the screen. Please stand again as you are called or feel able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting mercy and pardon. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven, and we are free to love as God loves. Amen. I invite you at this time to share the peace as you feel comfortable or are able. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. foreign but again you know to pull out those handheld devices it's okay to use them in church <laughs> again the peace of the Lord be with you always let us continue by singing our gathering hymn O God beyond all praising Yeah. 
Together, let us pray. Direct us, O Lord God, in all our doings with your continual help that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. A reading from Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel." At one moment, I may declare concerning a nation or kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring about. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good I had intended to do. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now from all your evil ways and amend your ways and your doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from Philemon. When Paul is writing this letter to his friend, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> when I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> I pray that, sharing, that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do in Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me. But how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. And if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about you owning me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confidence of your obedience, I'm writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you feel called or able as we welcome the gospel in song.
the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Now for which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation, is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down and first consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. Therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And I invite you to be seated. Do you know what I have? (laughs) I invite all the kiddos to come to the screen and I promise that this is not an advertisement for Lay's potato chips Mm, yeah mm. does anybody remember the marketing slogan for this bet you can't eat just one Oh, my. It's heavenly. I don't have a lot of chips around my house. I try not to eat them. And I know that once the bag is open, they're gone. They're absolutely gone. But boy, was this good. You know, we have a lot of temptations in life (laughs) and a lot of choices that we have to make. So I have a choice whether I go digging in this bag and lose the bet of I can't eat just one. Or I I have the choice to say, okay, I'm not gonna do that. But here's the thing. No matter what our choice is, God is with us. God is with us. And he does not leave us. And he stays with our choices, stays with us in our choices, whether they're, whether we make good life choices or bad life choices or seriously contemplate taking another chip out of this bag. Amen. (laughs) Those will be um, in the Koinia Cafe. Immediately following this worship service. All right. Oh, that's interesting. Hang on a minute. You know, I love technology. It is great until it's not. Okay, there we go. There are many lessons that I have learned from the, this pandemic now turned endemic. And one of them is, is that we Americans love our choices. Uh-huh. We become incensed when those choices are taken away or even attempted to be taken away. We dig our heels in. It doesn't really matter if it's meant to save lives or not. Think about it. We get into our cars 
and put on our seat belts, making sure that our kiddos are always strapped in snug and secure because the evidence is overwhelming. Seat belts save lives. And yet, even today, even though there are laws on the books, even though the three-point seat belts have been in cars since 1968, there is still controversy. A response to the article called The Continuing Controversy of Seat Belts, this was from Wisconsin Public Radio in 2017. And a response to the article, you know how you can comment at the end of stuff? Yeah. The evidence is significant in supporting seatbelt use, but try and enforce use by law and fines is observed and intrudes on freedoms. Okay. But this person also went on to say that if a person suffered catastrophic injuries because of their choice to not wear a seatbelt, then there shouldn't be any taxpayer bailout. So even though seatbelts have been, been in cars since not early, early 60s, there's still controversy. Now turning to our selected reading, readings from today, and keep in mind, I'm going to tell you, I don't choose them, I just preach them, because we go by the uh, revised common lectionary, and so I get a set of readings each week from which I am to preach and teach. But upon careful study of these, I noticed one thing, that they were all focused on choice. From Psalm 139 to Jeremiah to Philemon to Luke, it's all about choice. And in Psalm 139, we sing about a God who watches our every move. Now, for some, that might feel a little bit creepy, But here, the the psalmist is saying, Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You You know me in my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. We, you and I, are watched over by the one who understands and knows us. And as Rabbi David Wolf says, This is a blessing because we are no longer alone. Kind of like that bag of chips and making that choice. We are no longer alone. Most of our lives we live inside ourselves expressing but a small fraction of the drama, the dreams, and the pains that make us human. And Diana Butler Bass points out, and what draws God's attention? Our choices, our actions. And she points to verse 13, where that describes a God who has wonderfully and beautifully created each and every one of us. So yes, we are known by our choices. We are known by the actions that come from our inmost parts, from inside. Now, Bass posits that the inmost parts, which in Hebrew can translate as kidneys, which in turn is thought to be the seat of conscience, that the verse could be translated as, you created my conscience. Making this a text about conscience and ethical agency. And the psalmist is meditating on how God gave human beings a conscience, the capacity for moral choice, the ability to discern and make ethical decisions. Yet, yet, God does not abandon us in our choices. God accompanies us through them. The good choices, the bad choices, God knows us and our actions. Rabbi Wolp affirms this when he writes, to feel that you are before God is to be aware of the consequences of your actions, to be sure. The watching of God is not only an encouragement, 
to ethics, but it is a comfort. We will act better for the recognition that we do not act in secret, but we also will live more happily for the recognition that we do not live in isolation. In the Jeremiah text, we read about a potter who was working on a vessel, but it wasn't turning out so great. So he kind of smushed it all up again and then reworked it into something that was good. And God says, like the clay in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand. This is the God, as we see in this, in this part of the scripture, this is God who can and will change God's mind depending upon the circumstances. This is a God of choice. And the gift of choices is passed along to God's creations. It is passed along to you and me. And not only that, we can be persuaded to make good choices by considering our context. And just like God, we can discern and evaluate. Because that's what God is doing in this particular scripture. He's saying, listen to me, things will be good. Don't listen to me, uh, it's not going to be so good. Your choice. In the New Testament reading, Paul brings back a runaway slave whom, de whom he describes as my heart. And so Paul writes in his own hand a rather convincing letter, hopefully, that Philemon's good deed might be voluntary and not forced. See, Paul's given him the choice. Paul speaks of the hope that they will be reconciled and that relationship will be changed from that of slave and master to that of brothers. The choice was Philemon's. Back in the first century, I, Jesus recognized that we humans also need the ability to choose. And that's what he lays out in this very difficult reading that we have today in the gospel. Very uncomfortable reading. Now, requirement to be a disciple requirement, one, seems simple enough, but it is also dramatic. Hate your mother, father, brother, sister, wife, children, even your own life. Now, the first century ear would have heard the word hate a bit differently. We here in the 21st century, in our context, equate hate with attack and harm and death and emotion. But for the first, person, first century person, it is an action meaning literally to detach oneself from or turn away from something or someone. This is drastic. When you consider in the first century that without a family, you were nothing. You were nothing without a family. And there was no such thing as I, and, the blood, and blood ties were very, very important. No family equaled no social existence. And this is what made being a widow or an orphan or a stranger so bad. They had no family. There was no one on whom they could rely. And so it's really radical and countercultural stuff when Jesus says that they must be able just to walk away from their families. But it gets better. Requirement number two, carry the cross. While we may think that the cross was there for capital punishment, for heinous crimes, for the first century person living under Roman occupation, it was meant to keep the conquered populace in line. To be told to go willingly over to a cross and carry it, presumably to your death, you could hear the gasp coming from those first century listeners. Requirement number three is do the math. 
In other words, count the cost. And Jesus uses two analogies, the builder and the king considering a battle. Can the builder finish the tower? Can the king win the battle? See, Jesus is asking the crowd, and Jesus is asking us too, do you want to make this journey? Can you fight the battle that is coming? Can you build the tower that Jesus wants us to build? Are we committed to the transformation, and are we willing to invest all, all, that it will take to do it. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty overwhelmed right now. But here's the gospel, the good news in all of this. We already have the grace and the forgiveness through the love of God in Christ. The reality is, is that the Christian life is expensive. We're called to expend time and talents and treasures to build the kingdom of God. So we do a cost analysis. Requirement number four, give it all up. Be all in. Is being a disciple the number one priority in your life? That's what Jesus is asking. This requirement is so radical because Jesus is asking the question of us. Who and whose are you? Whose and whose are you? You see, there's a baptism tie in here because when we are baptized, our last names are not used have you, ever, have you ever noticed that our last names are not used? And the reason is that even though we are not renouncing our familial ties, okay, they are no longer the most important thing. Being called a child of God is now the most important. You see, our relationship with God is priority and all else is secondary. We, we die in sin and we are risen in Christ. And yes, Jesus expects us to be an all-in as a disciple. Now, I will tell you that there's an interesting aspect that gets lost in this translation of our scripture today. We read, not able to be my disciple. But rather, we can read it as something that we really, really, really want to do, but aren't quite sure that we can do it. Does that mean that we will never, ever, ever be able to be disciples because we can't fill, fulfill those four requirements no matter how hard we try and no matter how deep our desire is to be one? Perhaps. I'm not the one to judge or to say, but I will tell you that all the verbs in this passage in the Greek, are present tense and indicate ongoing actions. Take up your cross and continue to follow and to continue following. See, it doesn't end because it's not a one and done list. It's not something we can check off, but it is something that is now something that continues in the future. And so we keep working on it. So remember, there, was, there never was, there never is, and there never ever will be a requirement for us to do it alone. And just remember, the choice is ours. Amen. We continue with our our hymn of the day. Please rise as you feel comfortable or are able. <laughs>
us confess our faith, the faith that makes us one by using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. We pray for the ch our church around the world and for the mission of the gospel. Refresh the hearts of your people, deepen our understanding of every good thing we share, and strengthen our partnerships in faith. God, uh, <clears throat> merciful God, receive our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and all its creatures, for trees and forest, for all that will yield fruit in this season, for streams and other bodies of water. God of grace, he gave our prayer. For all in need who suffer from disease, who struggle with homelessness or food insecurity, for those whose family life is difficult, and for all in this community who need your care, especially we remember Greg Williamson, Susan Brustlin, Colin McCoy, Sylvia Rollins, Cindy Rohr, Gail Taylor, Dennis Lyons, Charnette Carbon, Corbin, Elaine Gifford, Doris and David Howe, and all those that we name before you now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For this community of faith, for all our labors, begun, continued, and ended, ended in you, that they glorify your holy name. Bless your people with the strength to live into their many vocations for the sake of the world. God of, gra God of grace and merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who now rest from their labors. Give us faith like them to love you with all our hearts, and by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Just a quick reminder that we don't pass our, our offering plates at this time and that it is in the Narthex area, our gathering area, the offering plate is there. And for those of you who prefer to give online, like I do, um, the QR codes are on the back of our bulletin and they'll come up on the screen as our choir uh, gives their offertory today.
Please rise as you feel called or able. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <clears throat>
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. All is prepared. I invite you to be seated. Come to this table. Christ does not care who we are or what, uh, what we are. He simply bids this to come to his table of love. And when Christ says all, he means all. Amen. As we sing Lamb of God, for those who have chosen to receive communion in your places, please prepare your communion at this time. body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. As you come up for communion, for those who are in our, our uh, worship space here, we remind you to come up the center aisle, exit by the side aisles. There is grape juice there in the, in the t um, tray and our uh, gluten-free uh, Wafers are up here.
life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us um, grasp the hand next to us as you feel uh, comforter, com comfortable. There we go, comfortable, or um, as you feel able as we sing our celebration hymn. Receive the blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Join us as we sing our sending hymn, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. Thank you. 
Just a few reminders as we go out into the world to reflect the love of Christ through reaching, loving, and caring for all of God's people. Koinonia Cafe is immediately following worship and then join Bob Cuckcuck for his presentation on artificial intelligence and society at 1.20 and the bag of Frito-Lays will be there. Women's Bible Study meets this Wednesday, 9.30 on the campus of RLC as well as online. God's Work Our Hands Day of Service is next Sunday, Sunday, September 11th, and we do need you to keep on bringing the needed items for our breakfast bags. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Amen.